Hi everyone and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. It is the gift giving season and I'm leaving the university very, very shortly. And I have wonderful colleagues in my office suite that I want to give a, a small gift to. And we don't go crazy about gifts. Everybody does something that is just kind of a token and something nice. But I wanted mine to be a little bit special this year. And they all know, of course, about our YouTube channel and many of them have subscribed. So ultimately, they most likely will see this video because today I'm going to share with you the gifts that I'm going to give them. And this is a simple gift, but it is so thoughtful because it is handmade and it is easy to make and doesn't take a lot of time and it is absolutely delicious. And I'm talking about ginger honey syrup. And ginger honey syrup can be used to make ginger honey tea. And also it can be, be used as a sweetener for other teas and other drinks. It is a very versatile gift. I'm going to be putting it in these little jars. These are Weck jars. And when you do a gift like this, making the jar a little bit fancy adds a lot to the appearance of the gift. And then I'm going to wrap it with some uh, string. And I have a little card that I'm going to be also putting in the bag that gives them instructions. And I'll show you all this uh, at the end when we get it all made. First of all, let me just tell you that this simple syrup is a one-to-one -one syrup. It is one part water to one part honey. And as you know, Jim and I have been beekeepers for a lot of years. And even though we um, gave our hives to our children several years ago, we had lots and lots of honey in storage. So I have five cups of honey right here. And I have five cups of water in my favorite pan. Now, since we did minestrone soup earlier this week, a lot of people have been asking about this pan. This is my Maslin pan, and it is on our Amazon store on our website. So just go to www.roseredhomestead.com and um, then the top menu bar has our Amazon stores. We have two of them, one for Rose Red Homestead and one for our other channel, um, which is Trail Grazers. Now I'm going to show you how I prepare the ginger. When Jim asked me how much ginger I wanted him to buy, I told him, well, I'm going to make nine to 10 cups. So I want about nine to 10 thumbs worth of ginger. And he got me two pieces about like this, which is just about right. One, two, three, four, the knobs are five. And then of course I have this other piece. Now one, I have peeled about as good as I'm going to peel it. The other one, I have not peeled. I checked a lot of the different recipes and some say don't even worry about peeling it. Others say peel it. So today I'm just going to do half and half. The whole idea of this is that you want the ginger to have exposed as much surface area as possible so that when we simmer it in the water, the flavor can move out of the ginger and into the water. So we're going to, I'm slicing it quite thin, about like this. And yes, it has little pieces of skin on it, but I'm not going to even worry about that because I'm going to be straining out the ginger out of the water before we add the honey anyway. So I'm going to continue with this. Now, what I use to peel this ginger is a canning lid because it has a nice sharp edge right there, sharper than any spoon I have. People will either use knives, and I've not mastered using a knife with ginger. Um, I usually cut my fingers. Other people use a spoon, and our spoons don't have a sharp enough edge. So I just use this little lid, and it really works um, very well. And so I just scrape, and the skin just comes right off. But I'm not going to completely peel this one, just enough to show you how I did that. And then um, I'm not going to... This one I'm just going to slice as is. This one has pieces of skin. I usually cut off the dried up edges, but everything else goes into the pot. And we'll come back when we get this going and you can see what it looks like. The ginger is all cut up and in the pot. The pot is simmering and um, we'll let it simmer for about 20 minutes and then I'm going to turn the heat off and let it sit for anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes. I will be tasting it 
because I want to get it to, I want it fairly strong, and so I want to get it as strong as possible while it just steeps. And then we'll come back and I'll show you what the next step is. So I think it's done. I have tasted it. And when it gets to the point where when I take a little taste, and then after a moment or two, that taste just explodes all around in my mouth. And I can really taste that strong ginger taste. It almost numbs my tongue a little bit. That's when I want it. So this is what it looks like. So here's the next step. I am going to pull out this ginger. I would not be a bit surprised if there's still some flavor left in this ginger. So I am not going to discard it. I may be wrong, but I'm going to try it. Instead of cutting up a new batch next time I want to make some of this, I'm just going to use this. I'll keep it in the freezer and then pull it out when I'm ready to make another batch. I'm sure I will have to steep it for longer but that's okay too. And then I'm going to strain it right into this pan. You can see that it has turned kind of a ginger color. There are some little pieces left. And I'm gonna quickly rinse this. And I'm going to put it back in here Turn it on, and now we're going to add the honey. Our honey has a little bit of a strong taste. It's mostly rabbit brush. And it is delicious. And then I'm going to just stir this until the honey, and it's heating now, until the honey is completely melted. Essentially what we are doing is thinning the honey with this ginger infusion. So it combines the taste and it is just fantastic. And once the honey and the ginger water are completely blended, then we will put it into the jars. It does not have to boil or cook longer or anything here. We just need to get it so that it is completely mixed together. It's a beautiful blending of the two flavors. I tasted the honey first which was very soothing. If I would have had kind of a scratchy throat, that would have been great. And now the ginger is just exploding in my mouth, so it's lovely. So we're gonna bring this to almost to a boil to be sure that it is completely mixed together. And then we'll start getting it in the jars and we will bring you back at that point. The syrup was boiling when I poured it into these jars. And now I'm just putting the lids on with these gaskets and two clips each. Um, we may get a seal on these. When these seal, this little tongue thing goes down and I can take the clips oof, off and just hold, pick it up by the lid and it will hold. But they don't really even need to be vacuum sealed because these are not being canned. Um, and you keep them in the refrigerator. So when I put the gasket on, I put it on the underside of the lid. And these have all been washed in hot soapy water. And then I just place it over the jar. And I just wiped all of these rims off so that they are not at all sticky. And then I just put my index finger there to hold it as I wrap the clip around and then put one opposite. Let me show you what we're going to do with these. So these are my little gift bags. And I tried one out. This one doesn't have anything in it. I can't hold those. They're too hot. But I'm going to wrap a piece of this uh, 
I think it's called raffia, and a red and white string around just like that, and then put that inside the jar, along with a little card right here that has a little message, and it says Merry Christmas, and then I've signed my name. And so this is what the gift is going to look like, just like this. Here is exactly what the card looks like. It's blown way up. I'm going to read this to you. It says, Ginger Honey Syrup. Ginger and honey both have amazing health benefits. Made from fresh ginger and honey from our bees, this syrup makes great ginger honey tea and can be used as a sweetener for other teas and drinks. And then the green down here says, ginger honey tea recipe. To a cup of boiling water, add the syrup a teaspoon at a time until desired taste is achieved. Stir until syrup is completely dissolved enjoy. Merry Christmas. And then I signed my name right here and a little message to keep it in the refrigerator. I'm going to put this up large size on our website so you can download this. And some of you are getting mixed up about where that is. It is on our website www.roseredhomestead.com. As soon as that comes up, scroll to the very bottom and this will be the last thing on the page. You can download it, it's free. And then you can click on this and little dots will appear in each corner and you can shrink it down to whatever size you want. I shrunk it down so that I could get four per page, which was just about the right size. So we have some company that's going to drop in on us, unexpected to me. Um, and so I'm going to finish all this up and get everything all ready. And we'll bring you back after the company leaves to show you how everything has turned out. So we'll see you then. So the bags are all loaded except for this one. And here is the last jar. This is what it looks like. It's a beautiful color. And then I just put this right down in the bag and add this little card to the top. As you can see, the cards are at the top of all of these. And then that's all there is to it. On this handout that I'm going to put up on our website, it says honey from our bees. Um, because I know that not everyone has bees and if you might want to use this, that wouldn't kind of make sense. So I'm going to replace that language and say uh, local honey. And hopefully that will work for anybody who might want to use this. So this is a fairly quick and easy gift. Each of these is under $10 with the most expensive piece being the jar itself. So not too bad for a little office gift and uh, especially one that you do yourself, which I think is a little bit more meaningful. So thank you and I hope this is useful for you and we appreciate your being with us and we will see you at our next video.